the feminists I interviewed throughout my journey uh, across the board uh, said men don't have issues, they're the privileged ones, they've throughout history oppressed women, uh, and uh, the idea of patriarchy. Uh, and I realized that, you know, what I was learning from MRAs is that men do have a lot of issues, and, uh, and I, for many, uh, even long after I stopped filming, I wanted to hold on to my feminist label. It wasn't until uh, fairly recently I dropped it, but uh, but I was wanting to figure out how to include men's issues within the feminist, uh, under the feminist umbrella. And, and then I realized that uh, feminists do not want to address men's issues or admit that they have uh, equal uh, obstacles that need to be addressed and, and solved. And I started learning that many feminist groups will actively oppose joint custody legislation and do not want to include uh, male victims in, in rape laws. Uh, and just the, over, the overall dismissiveness and, and uh, diminishing of men's issues in, in a, almost in a disgusted kind of uh, dialogue. Like, how could you say men have issues? They're the privileged ones, and men throughout history have been uh, oppressing women. And I don't see that as a, I don't see that kind of conversation as the road to gender equality. When you, when you are uh, putting down men and, and laughing in their faces about suicide rates and workplace deaths and war deaths and and any time I did bring up men's issues to feminists, there was always a yes, but women have it worse kind of response. So, for instance, uh, war deaths, ninety nine percent in. in for our wars in the past 100 years, 99% of deaths were men. And in, in, in Vietnam, uh, over 17,000 U.S. soldiers were drafted that died. So 17,000, over 17,000 men that did not want to go to war died in that war. And I would bring that up to feminists, and the response would be, but women couldn't serve in combat, so it's really sexist against women. But and any issue I brought up, it would always be a uh, women, feminist women wanted to uh, say that women had it worse and wanted you to agree that women have it worse and that women are the, are the discriminated against gender and not men. And, and I don't see that as helping the gender equality dialogue. Of course, I'm still for women's rights. I'm always going to be for women's rights and female empowerment. And obviously, I'm a career woman. I, I have a niece that I adore and, and my whole... I, I'm one of four sisters, I'm, my best friend is my mom, uh, there's a lot of estrogen around me, uh, but I, you know, I love uh, being able to be a powerful woman and want to encourage my niece to grow up to be an empowered girl and do whatever she wants to do. Uh, so that's no question, I'm, I'm always going to be for women's rights, but feminism is, is an ideology that believes that women have always been oppressed by men, that men are the privileged gender and that we need to work on women's equality before we can discuss men's, but there's no real uh, sign of ever, uh, of women achieving equality in a, a feminist um, perspective. Uh, and, and anytime there is a, a something on the ballot or, or legislation to help with men's issues, like in choice, joint custody or, or rape laws, uh, radical feminists oppose it. So I don't see that as the, the, group, the movement for gender equality when when men are being stepped on in the process. Basically, you're saying that the brand, the feminist brand, has been so besmirched by behaviors that you'd rather not call yourself a feminist, even though what you're doing is actually honoring the essence of what feminism is supposed to be, which is equality. Okay, that's enough for irony time. <laughs> Um, well, I, I do hope uh, people see the film to see why I ended up dropping the label and, and uh, you know, I'm not in any way advocating for others to drop the label. I just chose that for me. I did I did ask myself, should I uh, remain a feminist or keep calling myself a feminist to try to change it from within, to try to rebrand feminism as being the, the movement for gender equality and, and we can be open to listening to men's issues and addressing those as well. Uh, and there are some feminists who have chosen to do that, like Christina Hoff Summers, who's uh, on YouTube, The Factual Feminist, and Camille Paglia. Uh, so there are feminists who understand men's issues and want to work within feminism to address men's issues. And they've, they've gotten 
smear campaigns against them from feminists for being too compassionate for men's issues. So obviously feminism is, you know, if you want to look at the basic definition, it's if you believe in women's rights, you should be a feminist, then that's one thing. But I, I do look at the tactics and, and the uh, the language used uh, by feminists, and I, I don't want to be a part of that now. 